All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So we touched on this topic a little bit in the last couple of videos, but in this one, I really wanted to just dive into the topic here. It's why I think the Jets draft is really a positive sign for Mekhi Becton moving forward. I know it wasn't just me, but I felt like every time I went online, every time I checked news, it was Mekhi Becton this, Mekhi Becton that. There was all this speculation. I mean, there was even a rumor before the start of the NFL draft saying that Mekhi Becton would never put on a Jets jersey ever again. You know, and it, it was it was it was kind of mentally draining to be honest with you. Like he was a first round pick, eleventh overall out of Louisville. Tons of upside comes in, dominates in twenty nineteen. Great, great rookie season. And there's just one thing after another: the injuries, the speculation. Will he be traded? Uh, size concerns, weight concerns, this, that. And um, you know, I, I feel like I could speak for a lot of Jets fans when you know, I, I when I say I, I was just sick of it. Right. Like, I just want to see Makai Becton out there on the field. And I'm just so tired of the rumors. But we have the NFL draft, obviously, and the Jets have the three first or the two first round picks. We trade back up into the first round. Go select Jermaine Johnson. Now, call me crazy, but I think if the rumors were true, I, I truly feel like if the Jets organization felt that way about Makai Becton, they didn't like him, he wasn't in the long-term plans, they they were uh, going to be shopping him, wouldn't Ike McWanu been the pick at spot number four? Would have Evan Neal been in consideration? What about Charles Cross? Three of the, th the three best offensive linemen, and they all went top ten. You gotta think. I, I mean, again, it, it's hard to imagine that Joe Douglas, the former offensive lineman, the guy that won a Super Bowl in Philadelphia, for one of the main reasons why was because of that offensive line. You gotta think that he would he would have selected an offensive lineman. Neil Ekwanu and Cross are all legit, right? All of these guys project really, really well into the NFL. It's not like this year's quarterback class where you have maybe one going in the, in the first round, Kenny Pickett, uh, developmental guys, everything like that. No, it's it, those guys are studs. So if if Joe Douglas truly felt that he had an issue with tackle, he didn't want Makai Becton, he was going to put him on the trade block, he was going to start fielding calls, he wasn't, uh, again, in the long-term plans of the franchise, wouldn't you think Joe Douglas would take one of those slam dunks with the fourth overall pick? I mean, I just feel like it's common sense. Uh, he's not going to let his second-year quarterback um, out in the cold, leave, leave him out in the cold. He's not going to you know hang him out to dry with not giving him the protection. So when we look at the first round in total, Joe Douglas passed on offensive linemen three times. He had three opportunities to upgrade the tackle position, and he chose to pass every single time, 4, 10, 26. We fast forward to the second round here. We're sitting there at spot number 38. And as we get deeper into round two, we get word that the Jets are moving up, right? They're trading up from 38 to spot number 36. They're giving away a fifth round pick to come up and select a running back. When the Jets already had a good running back on the roster, it wasn't really considered a humongous need. We passed on linebacker, we passed on safety, but more importantly, we passed on tackle for the fourth time. And we traded up, so we gave away one of our later round picks here. There were more than more than capable prospects on the board. Guys that I felt like would come in and be good system fits. Guys that would come in and be good culture fits. Guys that you could build around on the offensive line. But Joe Douglas passes yet again. So at this point, it's pretty safe to say that Joe Douglas used the majority of his assets, right? This also takes into consideration free agency, which by the way, we are a month and a half removed from. We didn't really address the tackle position at all, right? The Jets spent three first round picks, a high two, a, th a third round pick. We didn't bring in that, that star left tackle, that star right tackle. We didn't uh, pull off a trade for anybody. We didn't re-sign Morgan Moses. Yes, of course, the Jets did end up drafting uh, Max Mitchell from Louisiana, a swing tackle. A guy that has great size and brings versatility, has a lot of starts on, under his belt, that's awesome. But I don't think the acquisition, the, the fourth round draft pick, Max Mitchell, is the automatic end for Mekhi Becton. You know, it, ju it just doesn't make sense. But if the Jets drafted uh, Ike McGuanu at four, think about what the headlines would be. You know, if, 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 if Evan Neal was the pick at spot number four, what's going to happen with Mekhi Becton? Who's he going to be traded to? Mekhi Becton suitors, top three landing spots for Mekhi Becton. Like, that stuff would just go crazy. But I think because Joe Douglas didn't opt to bring a tackle back in free agency in Morgan Moses, we didn't sign the big name guy, the Terran Armstead, or anything like that. 
we didn't draft one at 4, 10, 26, or in the, in rounds two or three, I think it's... I, I think we could sit here right now and say, you know what? Makai Becton's future with the Jets is looking pretty good. Now, of course, anything could happen. But, you know, when I look at these moves, when I'm just reading the tea leaves, and most of it is just common sense here, it these moves don't strike me as a team that is desperately trying to move off of their tackle. They're trying to move off of a guy that, that, uh, that they don't believe in. So that's just my two cents. I would love to hear your take uh, down below in the comment section regarding Mekhi Becton, regarding the tackle position. Obviously, Fant is going to be locking down uh, either spot. I would assume it's probably going to be left given... Uh, given what he looked like last season, I, I thought he did a, uh, a tremendous job in kind of a backup fashion, but he, he came in and held it down, right? He was not uh, bad. He wasn't, you know, a turnstile by no means. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, go Jets.